Homo sapiens. Who are we? Where do we come from? In chapter 8, we will begin our look at our own genus Homo with the help of paleoanthropology. Let's begin with a general overview. This will help establish a roadmap for the journey ahead. As we begin our overview of the genus Homo, let's keep in mind that there is often debate among paleoanthropologists over fossil discoveries. Is a newly discovered hominin fossil a new species or just a variation of a known species? This will be a recurring issue as we move forward in our look at the genus Homo. As we noted in Chapter 7, where to draw the line across diverging gene pools is not an easy task. Let's begin. The earliest species assigned to the genus Homo is Homo habilis. The first fossil find designated Homo habilis was found in 1960 in Olduvai Gorge in Tanzania by Jonathan and Mary Leakey. The time range of Homo habilis is approximately 2.5 million to 1.4 million years in the past. Going down the timeline, we would next encounter Homo rudolfensis. The fossils of rudolfensis were discovered in 1972 on the east side of Lake Turkana in Kenya by a research team led by Richard and Meeve Leakey. The estimated age of rudolfensis is 1.9 million years in the past. Next on our timeline, we encounter Homo ergaster. The designation of ergaster as a species is a point of debate among paleoanthropologists. There is a school of thought that ergaster is just a variation of Homo erectus. Others feel ergaster fossils vary enough from later fossils of erectus, especially those discovered outside of Africa, that it warrants ergaster being designated a separate species. The first fossil find designated Homo ergaster was made in 1971 in Kobe Ford near Lake Turkana in Kenya by members of Richard Leakey's research team. The fossil was first designated Homo habilis. In 1975, Colin Groves and Vratislav Mazik reassigned the fossil to a new species which they called Homo ergaster. The range of ergaster is estimated to be 1.9 to about 1.4 million years in the past. Next on our timeline, we encounter Homo georgicus. The fossil remains of Homo georgicus were discovered in 1991 by paleoanthropologist David Lord Kipanitsa in Dimanissi, Georgia. The fossils were first thought to belong to Homo ergaster. In 2002, the fossils were assigned to the new species Homo georgicus. The fossils of Homo georgicus were dated to about 1.8 million years in the past. This important find clearly demonstrates that members of the genus Homo had migrated out of Africa by 1.8 million years ago. Next on our timeline, we encounter Homo erectus. Homo erectus is thought to have been the first hominin ancestor to migrate into Asia. The first fossil remains of Homo erectus were found in 1891 by Dutch anatomist Eugene Dubois in Indonesia at Tranil along the banks of the Solo River on the island of Java. Dubois assigned his find to a new species he called Pithecanthropus erectus. The fossils were later reclassified to the species Homo erectus. The time range of Homo erectus is around 1.5 million years ago to as late as 70,000 years ago. Next on our timeline, we encounter Homo antecessor. The first fossils of Homo antecessor were found in 1994 at the Grandalina site at Sierra de Atapuerca in northern Spain by Udall Carbonell and fellow researchers. The fossils of antecessor represent the oldest hominin fossils discovered in Europe. The range of antecessor is estimated to be 1.2 million years ago to around 780,000 years ago. Some paleoanthropologists believe that Homo antecessor should actually be classified with the next hominid ancestor on our timeline, Homo heidelbergensis. The first fossil of Homo heidelbergensis was discovered in 1907 in Mauer, Germany by Daniel Hartmann, a workman at a local sand pit. Mr. Hartmann gave the fossil jaw to Otto Schottensack, who was a professor at the University of Heidelberg. Professor Schottensack assigned the fossil to a species he named Homo heidelbergensis. The time range of Heidelbergensis is about 700,000 years ago to as late as 200,000 years ago. Next on our timeline is Homo rhodesiensis. The first fossils of Homo rhodesiensis were found in 1921 by Swiss miner Tom Zwigler at the Broken Hill Mine in what was then northern Rhodesia, but in the present day is Cobway, Zambia. Due to the lack of proper scientific excavation of the fossils and subsequent destruction of the discovery site, dating is difficult. The estimated time range of Rhodesiensis is 300,000 to 125,000 years in the past. Some paleoanthropologists classify the Rhodesiensis fossil as being Homo heidelbergensis. Next on our timeline is Homo neanderthalensis. 
The first fossils designated Homo neanderthalensis were discovered in 1856 in a cave near Dusseldorf, Germany during mining operations by limestone quarry workers. The fossils were given to an amateur naturalist, Johann Karl Fulrott. Fulrott brought the fossils to Hermann Schaffhausen, a professor of anatomy at the University of Bonn. Schaffhausen and Fulrott made the discovery of the fossils public in 1857. In 1864, William King, a geologist teaching at Queen's College Galway in Galway, Ireland, suggested that the fossils be given the species name Homo neanderthalensis. The time range of neanderthalensis is about 300,000 years ago to around 30,000 years ago. Last and still standing on our timeline is our own species, Homo sapiens. The oldest known fossils of Homo sapiens were discovered in 1967 by Richard Leakey and members of his research team along the Omo River in the Kibish Formation in southern Ethiopia, approximately 100 miles north of the Kobe 4 fossil site. The fossils were initially dated to 130,000 years in the past. From 1999 to 2003, other research teams returned to the Kibish Formation to continue the field work. Among the researchers was geologist Frank Brown of the University of Utah. Using advanced potassium argon dating techniques, Frank Brown was able to more accurately date the Kibish fossil layer to 195,000 years in the past. The time range of Homo sapiens is around 200,000 years in the past to the present. Putting all of this together, we can create a general overview of the evolution and spread of the genus Homo. Using the fossil evidence we have covered in past chapters, we will create an epicenter of human evolution at Lake Turkana in northern Kenya. If we inscribe a circle around Lake Turkana with a radius of about 700 miles, we find ourselves encompassing a large area of the Great Rift Valley which has borne witness to at least 6 million years of hominin evolution. From Auroran Tugenensis in the Tugan Hills of Kenya to Artipithecus in the Awash River Valley of Ethiopia, to finds of Australopithecus in Ethiopia, Kenya, and Tanzania, to the find of Homo habilis in the Old Divide Gorge in Tanzania, to the discoveries of Homo ergaster near Lake Turkana, right up to the discovery of the oldest known fossils of Homo sapiens in southern Ethiopia, there is no other area on Earth that offers such a rich and continuous hominin fossil record. If we were to pick a birthplace for humankind, this area would be a good bet. Let's now take a look at how the genus Homo left this homeland and began to spread across the earth using fossil evidence as our guide. Looking at our map of fossil sites, let's add a handful of other sites which will help flesh out the timeline for the genus Homo. In Ethiopia, we can add a Homo ergaster site in the Bori Formation in the middle of Wash River Valley. In Western Africa, we can add a Homo erectus site at Tianif in Algeria as well as sites in Casablanca and Saleh in Morocco. In southern Africa, we can add a Homo ergaster site at Schwarzkrantz in South Africa, which lies just about a kilometer from the Sterkfontein fossil site. Moving out of Africa, we can add a Homo erectus site at Ubedia in Israel. More Homo erectus sites can be added in Java at Mojokerto, Sangiran, and Yangdong. Moving farther east into China, we can add Homo erectus sites at Yannau, Lantian, Hexian, and Zhukudian. Let's now make an attempt to establish a general timeline for the spread of the genus Homo out of Africa. The migration or movement out of Africa was probably incremental movement spread over thousands of years. A growing population and competition for resources may have caused groups of our ancestors to move into less populated areas where resources were more plentiful. With Lake Turkana as our center point, let's start our clock ticking around the two million year mark. Somewhere in this time frame of 2 million to around 1.8 million years ago, we would find Homo ergaster making an appearance in eastern Africa. Using the fossil site in Dimanisi as an early benchmark, we see that the genus Homo had moved north out of Africa by around 1.8 million years in the past. This gives us about a 200,000 year range for the spread of ergaster from Lake Turkana to Dimanisi. The walking distance from Lake Turkana to Dimanisi is about 3,000 miles or about 4,800 kilometers. Allowing for an annual expansion rate of just one mile a year, we see that it would take only about 3,000 years for our ancestors to have expanded their range into the regions around the Black Sea. At the same rate, it would have taken about 10,000 years for Homo erectus to expand into Java in Indonesia, where we also find fossil sites dated to about 1.8 million years ago. The sparse fossil record does little to provide a solid timeline for the spread of the genus Homo out of Africa. 
but we can speculate that from around 1.85 million years ago to around 1.75 million years ago, Homo erectus had left Africa. Our ancient ancestors had traveled more than 10,000 miles over a speculated range of 100,000 years. This works out to an expansion rate of about 528 feet per year. If we include the oldest date for the Atapuerca site in Spain of 1.2 million years ago, then it is possible some late variant of Homo erectus had moved into Europe by that date. By 1 million years ago to around 700,000 years ago, Homo erectus and its variants had spread across Africa into Asia and Europe. We have fossil sites in Western Africa and China that testify to the appearance of Homo erectus in these areas by 700,000 years in the past. Homo erectus had become the most widespread and successful hominin species of the ancient world. Yet for all the success of Homo erectus, the future of the genus Homo still lay in Africa. In chapter 9, we will begin to unravel the mysteries of the genus Homo as we continue our quest to find out who we are and where we came from.